Thank you, LaVon. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, good morning. If I could have all the uh, youth turn your cards around, facing the opposite way, so everybody can see everybody else's name. Wonderful. And then can I get all of you to stand up, all the youth. Stretch out your arms, shake it out. Shake out the legs, shake out the arms. I want you guys to get loose now. Because when our boss walks in here and we start this discussion, I don't want to hear crickets. I want it to be a lively discussion about the issues with the county executive. You, you know, you guys can have a seat now. Before I get into the PowerPoint, I just want to emphasize how unusual, well not unusual, but how unique this opportunity for all, all of you is. Usually when we do these kind of events, it's the county executive is trying to captivate an audience. And today, it's the opposite. You guys are trying to captivate him. We want to learn from your experience this summer, and we want to grow the program. So that becomes an exemplary summer youth jobs initiative for around the entire country. And we think that because you were nominated by your agencies, because your, your work was respected, because you valued uh, your responsibilities and your duties, that we would give you this opportunity to share your thoughts. So let's get into it. First, uh, we'll start with the PowerPoint. And I'm sure all of you have been looking through it. Um, we had a gentleman, Cornelius Berkeley, I, I guess you guys remember him from the orientation. He helped put this together. And um, this PowerPoint and survey was really his uh, pet project while he was with us interning. And so I want to skip ahead um, to slide 19 so that we can get into the numbers. Please uh, read the entire packet and appreciate all the hard work that went into it. But um, I'm interested in sharing with you the data because after the discussion's over, I'm going to collect your surveys. We're going to tally those results up, and that's going to give us some ideas about where to move forward from here. So the first slide you should be looking at is uh, how would you rank the more than a job life skills seminar? And Cornelius would be very happy to see that overall, two thirds of you thought it was fine. Yes. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a pie chart. And it should be in big, bold letters. How do you rank more than a job life skills seminar? Yep. There you go. We're going to be following on from there, so you won't have to find anything else. So two-thirds of you thought it was a, a really good idea, and this was the first year that we did it. Um, that's good, because the council legislation that was passed yesterday now mandates that we have to do a five-day orientation. So if any of you are part of the program next year, um, we're not going to make you sit at lunch tables for five days at uh, uh, Largo. But we do have to start expanding and thinking, what else can we get out of this orientation? How best can we enrich your experience? So most of you like the idea of doing a second day. And this was really our test run to do it with motivational speakers, uh, tips on financial planning and professional um, professionalism in the workplace. So the next slide is um, how would you rank the speakers overall? All of them got very positive feedback. We were happy to see that. Uh, lunch menu, you guys thought the food was okay, and, and we are glad about that. The one I want to focus on is uh, the next pie chart that says, why did you apply for this job? Just about half of you, um, so a little bit under probably like 100 and close to 200 thought for the work experience. And I would gauge all of you in this room would say work experience as well because of the experience that you've had this past six weeks. I mean, would you all agree? So, and in the survey that I just gave you, we asked, did you feel that you gained um, insight into your agency's mission and into your supervisor's 
roles and responsibilities and the duties of their office. And so I think that that's something really important for us to build on because we could take this in the direction that it's um, a sort of a stimulus project in that we're paying salaries to young people because we want them to have money in the summer and they can't, the economy isn't that great. So a lot of young people can't find jobs because in the way the economy is now, jobs that would have been typically yours in the summer, now people who are twice your age are fighting for those positions. And so it's really good that you wanted the work experience of a professional workplace. And so I found that really interesting and I wanted to share it with you. Um, of course you all wanted money and some of you just did it because your parents told you to. But work experience is the, that's sort of the cornerstone of what this program is, is learning about how this government works, how to interact in an office place, and um, how to do business in Prince George's County. So the next pie chart is, uh, was a life skills seminar beneficial to you? And 73% of you said yes, so I don't really have to go much further into that. The next uh, graph, pie chart and graph, is interesting, and it where we started to see so find some interesting things in the data. Um, we pulled this question out of a survey that was given by the University of Michigan to the participants of Detroit's Summer Youth Employment Program. Detroit, we all know they just went bankrupt, but every single year they employ close to 5,000 kids in their summer jobs program. And the University of Michigan did a sociology study on it because they wanted to pull data, see how successful it was. And so we're trying to get to that level of an, of an urban summer youth program. And so more than half of you would have continued looking for other work if you hadn't been given a job in SYEP. But 20% of you, or close to 30% of you, more than that, would have either just hung out at home, done nothing all summer, or found some other activity. So you would have been sitting idly by. And that is our worst fear, because in the crucial six weeks that we have in June and July, you guys, a lot of your peers would have been sitting at home bored, and they could have gotten into trouble. And so I think from the graph you see below that, you know, people think that um, teenagers not having anything to do is a socioeconomic issue. But I don't think so, because these three locations in the county all differ in all sorts of ways, and they're all relatively the same. All of you would have been bored no matter where you are in the county. So I found that interesting because I think it dictates that we have a county-wide issue when it comes to summer youth employment. And this year we employed 33% of the jobs went to kids in TNI areas. And I don't expect you to know much about TNI, but um, it really highlights the importance of expanding this program because it's a county-wide issue. So the next pie chart is uh, what is your goal for the program? And so that was broken up into three significant chunks. 24% of you wanted to successfully complete SYEP. So you wanted to go through the full six weeks, you wanted to get all the paychecks, you wanted to get as much out of it as you thought you could. Um, the next quarter of you just about wanted to build your career. And I think that's all the motivation of all of you in the room, is that correct? Yes. yes. I need an answer from everybody, not yes or no. Okay, pick it up a little bit. Um, so you build your career, you want to get life skills because I think we all know now that when you guys go to college and you immediately graduate afterwards, just because you have a bachelor's degree doesn't mean you're going to get a job. Employers are looking for individuals who have professional experience in the workplace. So in an office, project management, task management, that professionalism and all that is already stated. But it's being able to hit the ground running when you do get a job. And so building your career and learning workplace skills was a critical part of this program and I think it's something that we should build on. And then of course you guys wanted the money because uh, you know we're paying, if you're 18, 19 years old, we're paying $10 an hour and that's pretty competitive. 
So the last, uh, this one, I think this is the third to last, second to last slide, the feedback from participants. And this is something that we are going to address next year because we're going to have to have a five-day orientation. So you guys wanted a better venue, probably somewhere with comfortable seating, so an auditorium hall. Um, I think because it's going to be five days now, we're going to break you guys down into ages. So the 15 and 16-year-olds will be together, and then 17, 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds will be broken up. And, um, and so in the briefing memo that I gave you guys, I talked about the new legislation. It was previously stated that we were going to have a program from 14-year-olds to 21-year-olds. So it's going to be a, a larger age range, and you guys know that when you're 14 years old, you're immature, uncontrollable, and probably um, wouldn't have sit through a five-hour orientation. But now it's just 15 into 19, so the council changed that, and it didn't become law. So we're thankful for that. But um, so the future discussion topics, and this is actually what I want your feedback on when you're speaking with Mr. Baker today and the other um, members of the group, is I want to get your feedback on what are things that you want to get out of next year's program if you're with us. What are some of the soft skills that you don't know much about, like networking or um, you're honing your customer service skills, how what your job is now is relevant to a future college education, um, how you can build a business out of learning the skills that you do in the county government, becoming an entrepreneur, and, um, and also how you can find and potentially become employees of the county government. Because one of the questions that I asked in the survey today was, um, if you were offered employment with Prince George's County, would you consider um, joining us? And so I'm interested to see your feedback on that. So that's the PowerPoint presentation. I can go into um, sort of a synopsis of the council's legislation that they just passed, but... I won't. Um, so if any of you guys have questions for me about maybe my motivations for having, like, putting the survey together or just feedback that you have for me so that maybe we can get warmed up before Mr. Baker comes in and you guys are really primed to have a conversation with him. So because I'll, I'll give you guys a little tip of advice. He's going to feed off your energy. So if your guys' energy is really low, then he's going to feel like he's got to carry this discussion, and it's 22 of you on one. So I encourage all of you to ask as many questions now and start getting the juices flowing, and so that when Mr. Baker comes in, we can have a lively discussion and everyone can get something out of it. So does anyone have any questions now? Okay. Yeah. Why would the orientation be five days next year? I'm not sure why the council made it from Tuesday, two days to five days. I'm actually pleased to see that because back in um, December, I really, LaVon mentioned before that we're, we're new to the Summer Youth Enrichment Program. And so I'd been aware of it since we came into office in 2010, but I got really interested in it in December of last year. And then um, things really picked up when we had that two-week spike in youth violence. And everyone started asking questions, you know, well, what are we doing to combat these issues? What can we do? And so I had a working group put together of nonprofits like South County Economic Development Association, Men Aiming Higher, um, Town of Blainsburg, CBS Radio, our office, County Stat. Human resources were fabulous. They came and worked with us. And so um, what we discussed in that group is that we wanted our youth work program to be enriching in your lives, and so to get something more out of it than just a paycheck. So I think it went from Tuesday, two days to five days to allow us the opportunity to have innovative speakers and presentations that we think will impact you in a broader way other than just um, you know, your, your human resources orientation, which is very important because you have to know the rules and regulations of working in the government. But because it's now five days, we can address a, a broader range of issues. Anybody else? No? Yeah. That hasn't been determined yet. 
Um, but I, I don't imagine it'll be eight hours. It won't be 40 hours. I, it might. I can't make any promises. Whenever Nina looks at me like that, I know I need to walk back what I just said. So um, I, can't, I can't answer that question. I mean, it's, it's outlined in the, yeah, it's five. It's outlined in the legislation, and it, and it passed yesterday. I think it was unanimously passed. Um, they had eight sponsors for the legislation, so the entire council got behind this. Um, so I'm actually, and you know what, let me, let me go ahead and tell you some of the highlights for, of the council's legislation, just so that you guys are aware of, of how the program is going to be changing. So I won't go into any of the financials because... Um, those are still a little bit cloudy with, with some of the funding for the program. But really the fundamentals that you should know are that it's going to continue being a six-week program. It's going to be for 15 to 19-year-olds. Um, now what's going to be set up is, so the way that we paid for the program is that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Stephanie, you guys would get a budget for salaries for a lot of number of positions, and then you would pay the salaries for the program, right? Now it's going to be what's called a youth jobs fund, which is a non-lapsing fund. And so the funds roll over every fiscal year, and they don't go back into the general fund. And that fund can accept public and private dollars. And I want to emphasize how important that is. Because um, my working group actually set up, or our working group, the county executive's working group, I'm sorry, set up a fund at the Economic Development Corporation with the purpose of accepting private donations so that we could pay for more salaries. Because we didn't have any more money to pay for additional jobs, but we thought that if we could raise the money, like a lot of other jurisdictions and cities do across the country, including the district do, then uh, we would be able to, so like if a business um, has a great project, they're doing really innovative work, but they don't have the money to pay for an intern, we could front that. So that was, so it's really important that we can now accept public and private dollars. And so that means that we can fundraise for the program. The county executive can get up on his bully pulpit and we can um, find the dollars to help increase the number of jobs. We can do a lot of other things. We can increase our uh, visibility in the business community and um, make it easier and more cohesive for them to be a part of our summer youth enrichment program. And so that was uh, something really well to come out of the, program, of the uh, legislation that came out yesterday, or that was passed yesterday. Okay. Let's see. Um, is there anything I'm missing, Ms. Maxwell, of significance? In terms of the legislation? Yeah. Yeah, oh, please, if you'd like to come up. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me read here. The part of six week yeah, that's pretty much it. I can't, I, I'm not thinking of anything else. So is there any other questions? Yeah. Are they going to be any more activities? What do you mean? Like, I don't have anything planned for now, but I would definitely love for all of you to stay in touch with not only us, but we talked about the future feedback. You guys talked about networking. On an individual basis, all of you should be cultivating contacts from within the office that you're working in now, because you never know what kind of future opportunities will arise. So while we don't have any planned activities, um, unless you're a member of the program next year, I would always advise you guys to be proactive about the people you work with and give them the courtesy of, of inquiring about how you guys can connect in the future because you just never know what kind of opportunities can come up. I think a lot of us in here will tell you that um, while, we're, while we were qualified for our positions, we studied hard for them in school. Connections that you make professionally can go a long way because sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. So any, any other questions? Come on, just throw anything. It doesn't even have to be youth employment. It's not really a question. I just wanted to say how um, this year, 
this year, I know police department and fire department and corrections, we went on a lot of tours that were helpful for us, like now we went call center. We went to water safety, mm -hmm. police judgment. Yeah, and I think uh, more proactive activities and um, exhibitions of what your agency does are definitely going to be beneficial for you guys. And also, I mean, it's just, it's, I'll, it beats the mundane office work that I'm sure all of you did. Um, and actually, I, I took you away from a tour that you were doing today. I was reluctant to have the police department here because uh, you guys were actually going on a tour today, right? And you're going to to corrections you guys were going to meet the chief so yeah uh, I think that's definitely something I would please write that in the feedback and um, let us know that you guys want to do more out of the office activities you want to get more hands-on work any other questions well well now I mean I'll just introduce uh, the County Executive, Rashern L. Baker III, and he'll make brief remarks and then we'll, we'll begin. I was supposed to sit right here. Am I messing up the program? How are you doing? Did you guys learn a lot this summer? Did you enjoy the program? Very good. Um, did, does anybody know what I do? <laughs> Ooh, I love it. If I have my glasses, I can read your name. Naisa, we like you. Where'd you work? Did you? Wow. Who'd you work with? Oh, terrific. Wow. Um, where are some other folks who worked around here? Everybody work? Let me say this, and then, then I'll take some questions since um, you, you're now learning what I really do, what they tell me. That's <laughs> Sure. Okay, did everybody get that? <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for working for us for the summer. <laughs> Round table discussion. <laughs> then we'll talk about, you know, what, what you know. Yeah, let me just say this uh, before I bring up Stephanie, who's, who's terrific and done a great job uh, and, and, you know, sit where I'm supposed to, which is not near Nina, which is what part of the deal was to attract me to come over here. Um, <clears throat> but I, I will say this, we are very pleased to have you um, working with us this summer. As the, the folks you work with probably told you, these were coveted positions. And the idea is to expose you to the government. Um, so it's not just so much that you get a chance to work and get money, which your parents, and I'm sure you appreciate, and as a uh, father of, of, uh, of three, and with the responsibility of two, I'm always appreciative of people who give them jobs. But they still seem to spend my money. I don't know how that works out. Maybe y'all can explain that to me. But it's really to give you an insight as to um, the things that are going on in the county, and hopefully expose you to careers uh, that you want to pursue. But even if they're not careers that you want to go into, expand your mind. Because the things that make this society better and will make you a better person in, in, in this society is to expand your thought, your critical thinking, and your exposure. And that's what this is about. And um, so it's a two-way street. We hope that you learn some, something. We know that we have. Um, and we want to make this program better for those who follow behind you. Uh, so with that, I will, now that our director has left, I will turn it over to uh, Stephanie Maxwell-Red, uh, who will give us brief remarks, and then we'll have a roundtable discussion. And will it be real lunch, or is it like that fake lunch? Subway lunch. Subway. All right, so real, real lunch. lunch. Real lunch. Great. Stephanie, get, can we give her a round of applause? I don't know where I'm sitting. I'm sitting right over there. 
Thank you, and I can officially say good afternoon. So um, we're really excited to have you all. And for those of you that were at the orientation and I spoke then, um, you know that I'm really passionate about um, exposure for the youth um, because you are the succession plan is what we call in HR. There's a plan to always facilitate and educate the next generation. And the best way to do that as you figure out what color is your parachute, which means as you go through life trying to determine who you are and what you want to do to serve in any capacity. Our job as mentors and stewards, parents, employees, public servants is to help you facilitate that passion and to determine, and to determine what your life skill is. Because really one thing my father told me when I was young, when you're passionate about what you do, it's not work. So your job is to figure out what you're wired for, because everybody's wired for something uniquely that's within you. Our job is to help draw that out of you, so that you tap into what it is you were put here to do, and then that serves everybody. It serves yourself, it serves the community, it serves your family. And for us, where we sit here as public servants, we have a heart to serve. That's what we do. So prayerfully, we can inspire you to want to do the same thing, um, and so a lot, a lot of this is about you being exposed to people around you. And as I said to you at the orientation, figure out or find somebody that you admire, that you can shadow, because that's how things work. Um, you, you, you watch people, you watch what they do, you see where they are, and then that exposes you. This is your opportunity to be exposed to a working environment, a professional environment, and to learn what you can, not just about what's on the paper, but what's happening around you. So that when you go out, whether you go on into a vocational school, when you leave high school, or go right into the work world community, or go on to higher level learning in academics and college, that you have something tangible you can take with you. I can tell you this, I went on to undergrad, law school, and then I got my CPM. But along my journey, I mean, I've worked in the mail room. I started working when I was 14 years old, and I had mentors along the way that always helped me tap into the next thing that I was heading towards in terms of where I was going academically, in terms of when I wanted to go to law school, and all of that good stuff. So this is your opportunity. You can create whatever you want. It's up to you. We're here to facilitate and help you. That's what this is all about. It really isn't just about collecting a check because that's not really our purpose. Our purpose is to develop some passion in you because this is our county and we want to see you come back and be facilitators in this county because we can't do this forever. I can't be the HR director forever. Mr. Mr. Baker can't be the county executive forever. We need to inspire. He does need another term. <laughs> And that means so do I because I'm part of his cabinet. But what I'm saying to you is part of this is facilitating the next generation of leaders and managers and administrators. And so I'm always excited to see young people, always, um, because really I'm always excited to see what people turn out to do and what they want to do. I mean, that's exciting. You're at the, I call it a book, and you're at the beginning of the chapter of your book. You haven't even begun your journey yet. And that's an exciting time for you. We're all at different seasons in our chapters. My chapters are a little later than yours. It's not a conclusion yet, but my <laughs> chapters are a little later than yours are. So, um, so with that, you know, I don't want to take up too much time, but, but this is about you. And when we do expand the program, I think you asked why we're expanding. It gives us an opportunity to give you more. I mean, you've got the professional skills. They're also, I actually have been talking with some staff because they did a presentation for me this week because we're actually applying for a grant to enhance the program also. So prayerfully we'll get it. But part of that is also to add in components like vocational um, training and commitment. Everybody wants a different track. So why can't we expose you to what those tracks are so when you get out you know which way you want to go? So there's always a lot to do in terms of educating. Two days, five days, if they told us 10 days, we'd maximize that. So with that said, I will hand over the program back to our Director LaVon, and I thank you for being here, and I look forward to discussing with you and, and answering questions, and so thank you for this opportunity.